Uh, we are jumping into the next, I mean, session that is between 4 to 5.30 and headed by Dr. Rinu Yadav. Dr. Rinu Yadav. Yeah, thank you, Amal. I have joined it. Yeah, ma'am, you're, you're welcome. And uh, so Dr. Rinu Yadav is a... Um, Assistant, Assistant Professor in Department of English and Foreign Language, Central University, Haryana. And she she's holding seven years of experience in the university. And her research areas are Indian poetics, stylistics, American literature, and diaspora writings. And she has various publications and presentations to accredit. And recently, recently she has been awarded Best Presentation Award at the University of Mumbai for a paper on trauma studies trauma study and she is a member of the editorial board ij bst journal group and also a member of the board of studies and school board at central university of haryana besides academics she holds administrative experience as assistant warden assistant protector and coordinator of language lab at central university haryana <laughs> And ma'am, we are really happy. And let, let's uh, read out to you the research scholars so that you can uh, continue your session by your heading. Passing to Dr. Jocelyn. Good evening. Uh, today's uh, technical session will be chaired by Dr. Renu Yadav. And the presenters are Lydia J. from uh, Anivalangani College, a research scholar. And... Uh, Thank you. Her writing is on uh, an enchantment of Western civilization in Kamala Markandeya's two version. And uh, the third one is a Vaishnavi research scholar of uh, Anivalangani College. Her title is Alienation and the uh, Unsung Echoes in Khalid Hosseini's and the Mountains Echoed. And the fourth one is uh, Crystal Shani. Research scholar from Anivalangani College. The title is a postcolonial reading of uh, Aminata Fona, Fona's ancestor stones. And the next one is uh, ex Janisha Mary, a research scholar uh, from Anivalangani College. Her title is a Women's Experience in War uh, in Tahima Anam's uh, A Golden Age. And the next one is uh, Mihi Nancy. She's also a research scholar of uh, Anivalangani College. Her title is Education, a Route for Emancipation in Manjukapu's Novels. And the next person is uh, Angel Mary. Of, uh, she's also of uh, Anivalangani College. Uh, her title is uh, Psychological Expansion of uh, I, My Zing and uh, Amazing Ami in Gilliam Flint's Gone Girl. And the next person is Benila Vinci, a research scholar. Her title is Dislocation and Unhomeliness, a social socio-cultural perspective of Nadan Godima's Julai's people. One name is missing. I will uh, check the name and I will inform you within minutes. Thank you. Dr. Renu Yadav. Yes, thank you, madam. Uh, at the outset, like I'm quite uh, happy to see like all the research scholars of the department. Uh, of English and I Velenkani College are participating in this because uh, we all know that uh, now the time has come we all are celebrating Ajadi Ka Amrit Mohatsav and then we are talking about post-colonial studies which becomes very important you know for us to deliberate upon so uh, I'm uh, grateful to uh, research department of English and I Velenkani College and uh, uh, the conference is organized in collaboration with Cape Comoran Trust, Lavender Literary Club, International Tamils Development Trust, Cape Comoran Publisher, and the only name that I know that is of Dr. Rezin. So I am thankful to the Institute for inviting me uh, for chairing a session in this uh, conference. Um, regarding post-colonial studies, of course, we all do understand that we have started reading it. Uh, uh, you can say... Uh, that is yes, the colonial ideologies that are implicit, uh, you know, all the colonies, uh, you know, throughout the world, we can say. 
and uh, it talks about domination it talks about hierarchies it talks about cultural disintegration it talks about you know cultural discourse and along with globalization of course it has taken a different shape and now you know it is it has you can say spread its roots across uh, you can say literature art uh, cinema so uh, that has been there and as i can see uh, there are like research scholars who are presenting on the uh, diverse uh, writers Uh, and the theme which is specific in reference to post colonial studies so i can expect this is going to be an interesting session uh, uh, so i'm happy to join it at the outset uh, like i would like to say uh, uh, it it is i think there are eight or nine speakers so uh, time is around 90 minutes so 10 minutes will be given to one speaker uh, dr rezin if you are there can you tell me is it right i think 10 minutes are enough for a speaker and in the end we will have uh, uh, the like uh, discussion session so with that like i first invite uh, lidia j who is a research scholar in the department uh, the topic of our presentation is enchantment of western civilization in kamla markande's two version so lidia are you there yes ma'am yes you may go with your presentation yeah Good evening, ma'am. This is Lydia, research scholar, Anai Velangani College, and I'm going to present my paper on enchantment of Western civilization in Kamala Markandeya's two version. This paper it deals with the East-West enchantment in the novel. The paper brings out the sensitive events in the novel that portrays a child's loss of innocence in a earning design for Western culture. Kamala Markandeya, one of the most important Indian novelists, writing in English, is known for her writing in about the cultural clash between Indian urban and rural societies. Her novels seems to be fully reflective of the awakened artificial modern city life. The novel Two Virgins it encounters the difference between traditional simple village life and artificial modern city life. It is the story of two sisters who dream high to high in the world of glamour. The story narrates an unconvincing tale of an Indian village life by contrasting between two sisters. The two sisters Lalita and Saroja are made to choose between eastern and western way of living. Though there is no direct confirmation between an English man and an Indian in the novel, it has some references to the English culture. Lalita she develops a great enchantment for westernization she develops a relationship with Mr. Mr Gupta who practices the western values in his life he has no moral ethical values and he takes it granted and uses Lalita for his pleasure of modern life Lalita who is blind in the brightness of modern world elopes with him in a greed to have the pleasure of modern life and the novel also says uh, portrays how two sisters are brought up under the same parental roof or uh, brought up differently uh, saroja and lalita they are made to choose between different schools saroja is made to choose a school of indian village and uh, uh, lalita she goes for an expensive and superior school run by an anglo indian named ms medonsa and she learns a maypole dance in her school thinking as a quality to be westernized and lalita she uh, thinks that uh, to be modernized she should learn everything of about the western culture and she also thinks that physical attractiveness is also a quality for city life in the earth urge she earns urges to be come a film heroine and when mr gupta comes to take a documentary film about her village she wants to act as a glamorous girl but he she is made to act as a typical indian village girl and she get promises from mr gupta that he would enhance her in the world of glamorous world of indian films and she goes to this uh, city from village and leads a life as mr gupta's mistress and saroja uh, she has all worldly knowledge about all the worldly pleasures but she observes everything and waits for her time to buy it and not like uh, lalita she uh, waits for her time 
and uh, she is an uh, broad she is bra- portrayed as an innocent character who is the pl- between the plight of sensitive human beings caught in harsh dehumanizing society saroja here symbolizes the conflict between reason and feeling and she is also a conflict between tradition and modernity and uh, when uh, in that uh, conflict she elopes with uh, the, the mr devraj who is an assistant to gupta to have a uh, life like lalita and realizing that this is not a life she wanted she comes back to her village and when after coming to the village she realizes her mistakes and starts sobbing for this and thus uh, the paper has said about how the east west uh, has uh, made differences in the life of two sisters and brings out how in the to have the pleasure of modern life the sisters they do humanize their own values their own moral ethical values and how the it results to the individuals enchantment for the west thank you ma'am yes thank you lydia and uh, uh, lydia has presented over uh, like uh, uh, kamla markande's novel two virgins where she has projected about uh, uh, two characters uh, lalita and saroj and uh, uh, like she has projected out that how you can say our identity you know uh, that somewhere it caught up between the disintegration sometimes you can say we just want to cling to the tradition sometimes we want to cling to the modernization because of course this modernization uh, you know it is uh, you know quite catchy it is quite uh, you can say uh, we, we we think of you know being in attraction with but you know uh, uh, as 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 we uh, you know move further not only taking you know this englishness and uh, not only taking this indianness but somewhere we need to think that how we can evolve there with our own identity because this identity either it can be uh, it it cannot be formed when like where 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 we are living in separation uh, you know from any of the model whether it is about you know adapting whether it is about acculturation and somewhere you can say when we talk about kamla markande's writing when she has been writing uh, you can say about this indianness uh, and 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 her writings quite became famous during you know 80s 90s she had somewhere tried to you know bring out this identity aspect because when we talk about uh, this uh, post colonial identity then of course uh, you know identity comes at the center so somewhere we need to make a choice that how we are living with this cultural disintegration or we are going to uh, you know uh, merge with the same so this is of course you can say uh, kamla markande's writings uh, you know they pro- provide us this uh, platform of course i was saying that we will have discussion at the end but it happens sometimes that the uh, presenters they leave after some time after their presentation so i will not hold you till the time so this has been my observation lidia yours is uh, you can say interesting area and um, you have presented well but if you can include more uh, you know theoretical framework of post colonial uh, you can say theory with it then of course i think the study will be fine Uh, or or if you are you know working on the same in your research area you can think of the theoretical framework as well apart from this you can say it is quite interesting uh, and it has been a good presentation so i congratulate you for the same uh, thank you ma'am any, anybody would like to comment or anybody would like to ask anything from lidia uh, we can have two minutes discussion and then we can move further Okay. Uh thank you Lydia. Thank you ma'am. Uh, yes, now we move to the next presentation. Of course, I don't have name of the research scholar over here. Uh I think somebody was uh, uh telling me the name of the presenter. That the title of the paper is A Study of the Idiosyncratic Features of the uh Kohistani Tribal Community in Bapsi Sidwas the Pakistani Bride. Ma'am, good evening, ma'am. This is Srija. Okay. My name is Srija. Okay, Srija is the presenter over the same. Ah, okay, my. Okay, uh, Srija, I invite you for the presentation. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, good evening to everyone. Uh, this is Srija, research scholar, Anne Velangani College, Tolayavattam. The title of my paper is 
a study of the idiosyncratic features of the Kokistani tribal community in Babsi Sidwas, the Pakistani bride. So Babsi Sidwas is a celebrated writer from Pakistan living in the US and this Pakistani bride is the first novel written by Sidwa but it was published after her novel The Crow Eaters. The setting of the novel is Kokistan and this Kokistan it is an administrative district within the Hyber Pakhtunkhwa province in Pakistan. So it is where the Karakoram, the Hindu Kush and the Himalayan mountains lie. So many tribal communities are found in this region and these people they are highly orthodox, barbaric and conservative in their thought. And the Skokistanis form one such tribal community who are influenced by the Quran and its teachings. And they speak four languages of the Indo-Aryan subfamily. They are Tovali, Gavri, Eastern and Western Kokistani. And their way of life, it is quite interesting. And their way of life is unique and entirely different from the way of living of the people who live in the other parts of Pakistan. And in the novel, Sidwa offers a glimpse into the idiosyncratic features, that is the peculiar, peculiar features of the Kokistani tribal community. The first thing the, Kokis, the uh, writer projects is the Kokistani way of conducting a marriage. So it is very unique and it's interesting. They follow so many old rites and rituals in the marriage ceremonies. And Sidwa pinpoints it through two wedding, uh, through the wedding rituals of two couple in the novel. They are Qasim and Afshin, Saitun and Saki. And in the Pakistani tribal community, women are considered as commodities and this marriage, it is considered as an act of transferring bodies. And child marriage is also very common in the community. And in this novel, Afshin's father, Rasham Khan, he is unable to pay the loan due which he owes to Qasim. So what he does means he immediately provides his own daughter's hand in marriage to Qasim for the debt. And Afshin, she is married to a 10 year old boy. His name is Qasim. And on the day of their wedding, the bridegroom, uh, he is given embroidered waistcoats, turbans and new clothes. And this bride, she is given heavy silver bangles, necklaces, earrings and also a silver nose pins. So, on the occasion of her wedding, uh, thrice she is asked the question whether she is ready to marry this Kwasin. So on all the three times, her aunt says yes on her own behalf. So this reveals the position of women in the Kokistani tribal community. And the next thing, music plays a dominant role in the Kokistani tribal wedding. And they used to have the sharp quick beats of drums and gunfire during the wedding. So on the day of, on the wedding day of Saitun, so these, all these things happen. And then they also have this ululation. Ululation and it spreads and echoes down the whole valley on the day of these two marriages. The next important thing the writer focuses is the superstition of this Kokistanis. The superstition plays a dominant role in their day-to-day -day life. And they do not treat diseases. Instead, they used to pray their, pray to their goddess to free, to free them from the ailment. So in the novel, when this Kosim's own daughter, Saitun, she is affected by smallpox, the whole community consider that Mata, their goddess, has visited her in the form of smallpox. What they does means they spread herbs and leaves to cool down her body. And also they call her holy man from the locality and he places amulets near the child and sprinkles her with holy water. And their superstition kills the child at last. And the next thing, next important thing, the writer focuses in this novel is the Kokistani's word. They give prominence to the words given by them. They keep their words in all the circumstances of their life. So this is the main concept which revolves or which, which is found in the novel. And this when Kosim comes to claim his daughter from Miriam and Nikka. So the Saitun is Kosim's own daughter and he has given this uh, Zaitun to Miriam and Nikka and they adopts her and they uh, bring them, uh, bring her up as uh, their own daughter. And when he comes back to claim his daughter, he comes back and claims back 
his daughter and he uh, expresses the importance of a word given by a kokistani tribe and um, this miriam she blames cosin that he is selling his daughter for money at that time he reveals the importance of a word given by a kokistani he states that sister miriam it is not for the goats and maize please believe me it is my word the word of a kokistani so this much importance they give the kokistanis give uh, for the word which they have uh, given and the next thing uh, he tells that he has given a promise to misri khan misri khan his cousin that he would give his daughter's hand in marriage to his son so that's why he has come to claim his daughter for his word he claims back his daughter from his friend and he does not bother about the friendship which he has for nika and he does not even care about the future of his daughter his only botheration is the word of a kokistani so he says that i have given my word on it my uh, on it depends my honor and the next unique feature this uh, sidwa reveals in her novel is the appearance of the kokistani men so these men they are fair clan limbed with quick eyes and also sharp features so it is revealed through the description of kwasim misri khan and saki and this misri khan he is described as a young and energetic man with sharp hawk like profile and he is self assured hard and arrogant and saki uh, is pictured as a man of masculinity with broad shoulders and this and this and again the writer focuses on the kokistani uh, barbaric and animalistic behaviors and sidwa captures it through the attitude of the cruel attitude of misri khan so what he does means he shoots all the male members of an entire clan and the very next day he is at ease and he is not given any punishment to instead he is made to pay 6000 rupees as fine for 10 murders so this is the barbarous uh, behavior which prevailed in this particular community and the next thing is the kokistanis they are untamable in nature so the britishers uh, they tried their best to change this nature of the kokistanis but their efforts were in vain and the way in which saki treats his wife saitu on the very uh, first day of his uh, wedding reveals the animalistic behavior of this kokistani men and the next thing uh, the kokistanis they are cruel in their behavior but what they does means they honor the people whom they consider as their heads and also they are grateful in their they are grateful to uh, to them and when this uh, major mushtaq he helps qasim and his uh, uh, daughter what he does means this qasim he touches his forehead and remains standing until mushtaq returns to the sitting room so this is uh, where uh, we can find that how this uh, Uh, Kokistani people they honor others, and also he expresses his gratitude. He says that Allah bless you. His eyes full and his eyes of eyes uh, are filled with uh, this sense of gratitude. And this uh, another thing the writer focuses is um, the whole community. They consider if they if a particular man of that community face any disgrace, they consider. it as the disgrace of their of the whole community so they join together to take revenge on the person who brings uh, who has brought uh, this disgrace to the uh, honor of the clan and the sole punishment they used to give us uh, give to a runaway wife is to kill her so uh, another thing sidwa highlights is highlights in this novel is how this kokistanis they differ from the people who belong to the plains so for the kokistanis mountain life is reside is like uh, residing in heaven and they also find it difficult to stay in the plains so sidwa presents it through the life of kosin who leaves his uh, mountain village of kokistan and reaches julandu and it's a busy city in north india and he finds it very difficult to stay there and he longs for his kokistani friends and for him the men of the plains they are very very strange and he longs for his kokistani uh, friends and uh, the life which he leads in the mountains it is very very difficult but he prefers and loves his life as a kokistani and what he does means when he was in the plains 
he used to carry a pistol with him always and when an old man asks him the reason for carrying a pistol he says that to kill my enemies so he has fear within him when he stays in the plains and he is very very comfortable when he is with his own community people so this is a this, this is also a peculiar aspect the writer uh, highlights in this novel and the next thing this um, uh, the uh, kurdistanis they don't have uh, uh, they don't like the people from the uh, plains who interfere in the in their life they consider the people from the plains as their enemies and they behave very cruelly with the people of the plains and once this saki he is a kurdistani and he witnesses the major and carol they were together this major he is one of the uh, persons who belong to the pakistan army and carol she is a foreigner so they were together and he uh, he what he does immediately means he throws stones at them and with the pride of a tribe he narrates it narrates that a few days back i surprised the bastard crawling on all fours sniffing at an angry woman like a dog we threw stones at them laughed at them coming to our territory as if it belong it belonged to them to their bastard forefathers he spat contemptuously and that filthy dog spoke to you offered your husband work listen i don't work for anyone ever he blazed in wrath if i see anyone any of those swine again i will kill them so he uh, he expresses his hatred uh, hatred for this people of the plains okay and then um, the uh, sidwa all through the novel uh, she brings out the peculiarities of the kokistani tribal community and she presents how this cultural scenario of this kokistanis differ from the cultural aspects of other communities and by projecting the characters experiences in the plains and also in the mountains uh, sidwa highlights the peculiar life led by the kokistani people and the people of kokistan keep their honor in the high pedestal and they are ready to do anything to save their honor such a pursuit of honor takes place in this novel too she also highlights their notion of suppressing women and also treating them as secondary beings she also portrays their braveness their uh, talent in winning fights etc thus the novel the pakistani bride stands as a caricature of the pakistani people's way of living and traditions thank you ma'am uh thank you shrija uh shrija has talked about uh, the idiosyncratic features of kahistani tribal community in babsi sidwa's the pakistani bride of course when we talk about uh, babsi sidwa a bold novelist known for her novels pakistani bride cracking india uh, you know post colonial ideologies related to feminism marginalization that she has talked about and shija you have presented such a complex novel which has such a complex plot structure in such a you can say simple form of course you can say these are the issues of identity again i will connect it to the identity because uh, when we talk about sidwa's writing you know she talks about the objectification of women and when this objectification has been done we can see that you know it is existing in the two worlds one is men's world and another is women's world and of course women's world that exist for the name so bakshi uh, you know sidwa she has you know uh, talked about all these issues of existentialism along with you can say feminine ideologies okay so there have been various uh, uh, a long list of critics those who have talked about just a second the a long list of writers those who have talked about uh, uh, those who have talked about you can say how women has how you can say even this feminine identity has passed through you know certain levels so sidwa is significant in writing about the same and of course she talk about you can say one tribal community and there is you can say ways of looking at the you can say uh, tribal communities but as post colonialism it opens uh, a platform uh, for the natives for the you can say feminism for the marginalization so uh, it has been a good and interesting paper uh now we move to the thank you ma'am sorry sorry any any other question from anybody side any comment or anything you would like to add with the same with her paper
I don't know why you people are not putting any any you know question. At least you can share your views uh, related to the papers because such interesting papers are presented over here. Fine. Uh, now we move to the next presentation. It is about P. Vaishnavi, and uh, uh, she is talking about alienation and the unsung echoes in Khalid Hosseini's and the mountains echo. Khalid Hosseini, yes, yes Babsi, uh, Sidhuva, Monica Ali, these two three names that we take together. So Vaishnavi, okay. I invite you for the presentation. Okay, ma'am. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am Vaishnavi. I am doing my uh, research in Anne Velankani College, Cholaya Vettam. And I am doing my uh, research work under the guidance of Dr. D. Joanne Jocelyn. And my title for the presentation is Alienation and the Unsung Echoes in uh, Kalidosinis and the Mountain Sacred. Uh, so here I take uh, uh, alienation as a theme. Uh, alienation, it's a common uh, word because many writers and many researchers, scholars use the, this word. So when um, during the in modern age also, the alienation, it, uh, it has a new face. Uh, it, it never lost the significance uh, during this period. So in modern age also, the theme alienation is uh, doing many attentions from writers and researchers uh, and they are producing many by writing about uh, in this uh, title. So alienation, identity, crisis, and uprootedness are the common uh, common themes in contemporary fictions. And also, not only um, this alienation, identity, crisis, and uprootedness, we can see dislocation and also displacement also plays a um, key role in the sense of unhomeliness. And also, we can... Uh, say the sense of alienation and separation is the feeling of an outsider who does share his own culture and language in different nations. In this paper, I'm taking uh, Kali Dorosini's one of his novel and the mountain echoes. Um, the paper also shows uh, the particular characters who were alienation and how they feel, uh, how they feel their feeling, how they separated and how they feel uh, the, about their homeland. And uh, these are their demonstrated in my uh, paper. And my author, Khaled Hosini, is an Af Afghan American uh, writer because he belongs to Afghanistan. Afghanistan is a uh, war uh, country now. There, where we can see there was no culture, no nothing is going on. Every each and every nook and corner, we can see only a bloodshed, uh, and uh, uh, the people were crying uh, to survive in their land. So, um. My, my author, Khalid Dozni, who left Afghanistan during the age of 11, he left Afghanistan due to this uh, uh, Taliban's uh, attack. So he left the homeland and he uh, goes to Paris. He lives there and later uh, he lives, he goes to U.S. and there he started his uh, writing. So while he writes his uh, uh, novels, he mostly shows his own homeland because he was very much uh, uh, eagerly to uh, stay in his homeland, which reflects on his uh, writings. But in uh, he tries to rediscover himself. The other reflects his feeling of separation through the impact of exile and teen immig immigration. Hosni lived in several countries, not only in uh, Paris, uh, um, America, not only there, but he finds Afghanistan, his old Afghanistan, is, uh, is a very peaceful land. In, her, in his mind, the Afghanistan is a very uh, good country. It is a very peacemaking country. But after the entry of uh, terrorists and Taliban, it was collapsed. The Afghanistan has uh, collapsed into many pieces and pieces. There was no culture is there, everything. And uh, so you can see the political issues. So the people were also, they were not even having an equal understanding between the government and the people who were living in Afghanistan. And uh, so, um, so, so on his novel, we can find uh, so many echoes 
throughout uh, he was uh, projecting his own echoes throughout the many characters in throughout his novel and in this particular novel and the mountains echoed um, here they were talking about uh, uh, two person the brother siblings uh, that is pari and uh, Abdullah, these two uh, siblings, and uh, they were Padi is the protagonist in the novel. He, he um, about the portraits the living experience in Afghanistan through Padi and uh, uh, the how he lives in USA. Okay, when uh, the main character Padi is also lives in Afghanistan with his uh, brother playing uh, and running in the sand of Afghanistan. Okay, and uh, the story begins with the love of Paddy and Abdullah in a village of uh, Sarubag in Afghanistan. Abdullah uh, loves Paddy very much because these two small kids uh, left their mother. Remember, this mother was uh, died during their uh, very small childhood age. In the, during Paddy was infant. So Paddy, uh, Abdullah was very much caring and very much uh, uh, fond to uh, his uh, her sister Paddy. And they were born in a united family. So Sabur was uh, their father of these two children. And uh, when some days gone, uh, Sabur was also a loving father. But uh, due to some uh, economical and uh, financial conditions, he was unable to take care of um, the family and also these children. He is not even have the money to give um, a nice clothes, winter clothes uh, to these two children because uh, he is very afraid of that uh, cruel, brutal winter in Afghanistan because he lost one of the child in uh, uh, during that winter season. So he was very much afraid of uh, on that winter is coming on when I lost my uh, loving girl party. So while uh, during that time, he uh, left he left uh, Pari and goes to Kabul and we never accompany Abdullah. He says to Abdullah to take care of the stepmother and the stepbrother. But uh, Abdullah never lie. He thinks of that his father is going to in search of job. Then why he then he has a doubt why he is taking uh, Pari with her. Um, so when once uh, Abdullah tray goes behind his uh, father and uh, some way uh, Sabur finds that is uh, Abdullah is following me and he got angry and hit Abdullah's ears very hardly and uh, he he takes why you are doing like this why you are accompanying Pari with you uh, he never says anything then he came to know that uh, um, Pari is going to uh, give um, um, Pari to uh, adoption Okay, so on hearing this, Abdullah was very much um, broken. So, because he sees that Abdullah, his brother, sees mother in a party. These two were very closed, and they were so to uh, to safeguard his uh, children. Sabu does uh, does like this. So, but Sabu is an improvised man. He loves his daughter very much. Due to uh, circumstances, he uh, gives her he adopt. He gives her uh, party to Wahadi's family. It was a very rich family in uh, Afghanistan. So adopted so Wahadi, Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Wahadi. They have no children. So they were in search of uh, children. They have may, gone to many orphanages and looking through uh, each and every children. But Mrs. Wani, Mrs. Wahadi, that is, her name is Nila Wahadi. She was not satisfied on looking. When she saw Pari, she was very much uh, satisfied. And uh, when uh, she asked her to call um, Pari mother, then she calls. She's, she's very much happy. So she comes uh, to take adoption. And she when Pari leaves, uh, the, so they, they decided a date on that day. Uh, Sabur gave the girl Pari to um, Mrs. Wahadi. So on seeing this Abdullah, he was very much uh, heavy hearted. So um, when when the separation between Pari and uh, Abdullah, uh, the Pari lost. She has a hobby, childhood hobby that is she collects color feathers, bats feathers, and uh, with her, uh, the company with the brother. And when they separate, uh, she gives uh, that feathers to uh, Abdullah. To keep for her remember remembrance, okay. And um, then 
So Sabu knows that uh, he he never wants to give her that girl because the family situation. He has no such money. He was living in poverty, and also the uh, how the Afghanistan was going on. He can't he can't uh, grow up to have children, have child very in a well way. He he is unable to give a good education to his uh, girl child also. So he thinks of that in Wahadi's family, my girl is protected there, and he will be given a nice food, a nice clothes, a nice education. So. Pari uh, lives uh, um, to I mean Mr. Wahadi. So she was very much struggling to uh, uh, to match with that family because it was a very health, wealthy and healthy family. So anyway, she want to survive that. So uh, she, she survived there. Yeah. But uh, when he she left Afghanistan, she goes to settle in Paris with Wahadi, Mrs. Wahadi. when she enjoying all the luxurious life but she has some sagging mind where she belongs who did he when in her friend of eyes this these people belongs to me no i cannot feel uh, a close to ness because he, he is separated so but this adoption makes wahadi's family is very happy there was a turning point in mr and mrs wahadi's life they were enjoying this adoption they are enjoying the life with the pari but the pari is not full heartedly enjoying all the all the things all the uh, uh, giving all the money all the luxurious life in front of her she is not able to enjoy everything because she was in um, hanging of her brother's thoughts and uh, so when the adoption happened it she was 4 years old when she was staying in uh, paris she got nice education and coming to abdullah when pari left afghanistan she he thinks of there was nothing in afghanistan so he also left afghanistan and goes to america later he spends his life in america and he starts an uh, us uh, restaurant there an uh, afghan restaurant there and he sends and uh, uh, i'm going this he every day he uses to see that the feathers and touching that feathers and he talked uh, he talked uh, about uh, his sister pari to her friends his wife and everyone he says about uh, then once um, he was going on he will goes and meet uh, one of the family vaishnavi please conclude okay ma'am okay so finally i am saying to i to say is also um, that these two the alienated feeling between these two abdullah and uh, um, pari uh, the, the when uh, pari came to know his route uh, that is who uh, route in afghanistan he finds out the address and came to america to see uh, abdullah there when he when she saw uh, abdullah she wa he was in a mental disorder he was uh, um, affected by amnesia she goes and hugs his brother cries a lot and uh, he when when she sees her brother his brother's pocket was filled with the feathers that she gives to her so how was in illustrates how the feeling of alienation would affect the lives of the characters so his novel mostly about separation and it is the source of alienation of the characters the separation of abdullah and pari is the hardcore of the separation and it influences most of the other characters also the experience of alienation result in changing their behavior and their lives forever okay ma'am thank you yes uh, vaishnavi uh, nice yes, presentation okay ma'am uh vaishnavi has presented about like how alienation uh, yeah. you can say z code in khalid hosseini's uh, and the mountain z code uh, yes, uh, this is a novel about two characters you know what although i have not given a reading to the same but i what i could make out that it is about abdullah and pari and how you can say they have been presented as two individuals and uh, you can say if you look at the writings of uh, khalid husseini then of course uh, we talk about he himself you know uh, is a transnational writer you can say because he talks about you can say heterogeneous identities heterogeneous cultures and in a way like in this novel he is trying to project that how this transnational identity transnational identity uh you can say it can also you know provide a kind of platform where we think of strengthening ourselves in a way 
Otherwise, okay. you can see alienation and this, uh, uh, you know, uh, this is of course completely going to distort our identity. So somewhere we need to come out of the same. And of course, uh, you know, when we talk about this post post colonialism, uh, then of course. Uh, uh we take into consideration that how this transnational you can say borders diasporic existence migration that are you can say carrying a much more meaning okay and it is quite well projected by the writers across so vaishnavi you have made a nice presentation and you may uh, you can say uh, think of uh, uh, peter barry's uh, of course uh, the statement which he gives about you can say universal identity universal eco uh you know that is communicated there in the post colonial writings and how this novel you know it is going to project the same okay so this is what i could okay. get out and uh, i congratulate you for the presentation uh, thank you ma'am thank you for anybody would like to say anything or anybody would like to add i congratulate your guide as well uh fine so uh now we go to the next presentation and it is about uh, c crystal sane uh it is uh, uh, the title of the paper is post colonial reading of aminata fauna's ancestral ancestor stones i invite you for the presentation c crystal uh, sane sane are you there am i audible can anybody tell me admin am i audible yes ma you are audible okay okay crystal uh, shane you are not audible can you please start with your presentation actually uh, shane is not audible to me is she audible to anybody else no she has to unmute actually no she is uh, she has uh, like unmute no uh, oh, ma'am she is not audible she is not time. audible okay uh, shane you can uh, check your uh, network connection uh, till the time we are taking the next presentation it is by ex janista mare Uh, uh a research scholar from the department uh, the topic of uh, presentation is women's experience in war in tangima anams a, go a golden age janitha mary yes ma yes yes janitha okay good evening yes uh, okay janitha you may go. good evening ma yes yes you may go with your presentation and shane you can mute yourself okay. please uh, you know connect again uh, because you are not audible till the time we will have mary's presentation yes mary you may start with okay, okay ma'am uh, good evening everyone and i'm going to present the paper experience of women in war in tamima anam in golden age tamima anam was a bangladeshi british writer in this novel in the novel A golden age. Tamima Anand describes the women's experience in war. It is a historical novel. The novel deals with the civil war in Bangladesh, happened during the 1970s. The civil war happens between the East Pakistan and the West Pakistan. In this novel, through the character Rehana, uh, Anand pictures the different experiences of women attained during the war. And Historically, women play, have played a major role on the home front. The war affects women and men differently. Women who survive these atrocities often have to live with the vivid and terrifying images of rape, war, and death for the rest of their lives. And women during the war also suffer from sexually transmitted diseases and unwanted pregnancies. they are forced with the daunting task of keeping families together after displacement providing food clothing and shelter for their children and their families anam explores how the women feel about war anam conveys the opinion of women about the war through the protagonist ragana as 
the war would be referred to with phrases such as trouble like this trouble times like this and women played an important role in making the system of food rationing work it is one of the major things that women experience in war they know the importance of feeding the family they have to feed each and every one in the family so they know the importance of storing the food items as much as they need it when the war gets started rehana checked the for the food items it's got her that rehana checked the fridge and tried to work out how long the food would last she counted the chickens she measured the level of the rice three days she said to herself rehana was not aware about the duration of war but she had known about the amount of food items she thought the conflict would end soon but later she acknowledged that the war was dragged on and in presence nursing as one of the major thing women experience during the war men go to the battle front and fights for their country and women used to nurse them when they get injured this is the duty to serve for their nation in this novel rehana nurses a major at shona in bomb explosion to save rehana's son sohail the major gets injured himself and his leg was completely injured he can't move any, anywhere by his own so he kept as sona and nursed by rehana anam describes it as she didn't hesitate when the doctor told her to peel back the major's trousers and begin to clear the smaller wounds he gave her a pair of tweezers and told her to pick out the shards she bent over the leg working quietly ignoring the shadows coming from the major women had experiences various duties in the war and they had experienced many new things during the war they nursed the soldiers saved bandages saved kadars they saved kadars not only for soldiers but also for refugees nursing was not only the main job for women in war they also did various jobs during the war like sewing blankets serving in refugee camps etc the soldiers who were fighting for the country stayed in camps women collected men old cotton sarees and from them they sewed kadars for soldiers so rehana and her friends gathered at their houses and sewed kadars for their soldiers in a war women experience good things as well as bad things usually they experience bad things in war in wars there won't be any safety for women mostly elder women always worried about the young ladies during the war the enemy soldiers searched door to door for young girls in the novel a golden age anam pictures a lady who worried about the safety of her family in one in one of the conversations of her neighbor miss akram with her friends says we should all go miss akram said it's not safe for our children when the war gets started mrs chaudhry scared about her daughter silvi's future silvi and sabi get engaged when the war gets started after the war attacks mrs chaudhry worried about her daughter's safety as a woman she knows there won't be any safety for women during the war time anam also presents a raped victim in this novel here anam presents the character sharmin as a raped victim sharmin was a college girl who was kidnapped on the day war started and she was kept at the cantonment and was repeatedly raped by the enemy soldiers after sharmin's disappearance my my search for every for but didn't find later through her brother so hell came to know that she was raped at the enemy's cantonment and at last she died and in presence and in presence charmin as a representative of other women who were raped and killed by the enemy soldiers they don't even consider these victims as a human beings like them they consider them as an object which can be used and throw it away after usage fear is the worst
that women's experience in the war. Intense fear, mostly women possess more fear than men. Women in houses fear for the one in the family who went for the battlefront. They experience the living death because of their fear. Anna in this novel presents the experience of fear through Rehana. There were many uh, types and stages of fear. Women may fear of losing someone or about their safety. After hearing Sohel's friend Araf's death, Rahana began to fear for her children's safety. She had the fear that whether her children be caught up in any trouble. Anam in this novel presents the living experiences of grief and loss resulting from the trauma of war. Pain of loss creates more feelings. More in, uh, in war, there were many casualties. In war, each and every dead person is woman's husband or father or her son. Relationship changes, but death is formal. And through this novel, she ex uh, and portrays the experiences of women in war. And they experience things like rationing the food and storing it safely. And also they get bad experiences like rape, sexual abuse, pain of loss, fear, etc. And through the novel, A Golden Age clearly picturizes the experiences of women in war. Thank you, ma. Okay, Janisha, you have made a good Thanks, presentation. And uh, you. you have rightly talked about, you can say, how women have suffered, uh, you can say, during yeah. the wars. Specifically, if you talk about, you can say, uh, Tahima Anam, she talks about, you can say, Bangladesh origin. And, uh, you know, uh, Sri Lanka and Bangladesh, both the countries, even after independence, have gone through a lot when civil war has been there in both the countries. So it has been there. And, of course, this novel uh, talks about uh, how you can say women had suffered. We have Rehana suffering. But... Uh, I would like to provide a little bit, uh, you can say, different angle to the same that apart from these sufferings, we see that how Rehana, you can say, she has participated in, you can say, uh, forming the national consciousness, you know, somehow you can say she has recognized her power as a woman, as a, you can say, uh, or for her nation and she has, you know, uh, projected very boldly. Uh, apart from uh, you can see other things that she has passed through so uh, you can say women uh, you know too they have played a significant role when it turns out to be the national consciousness in during the wars we all understand this that women you can say they are doubly and you can say triply marginalized and they suffer a lot in comparison to the main uh, in comparison to the males but still they project that national consciousness and specifically in this book, a golden, in this novel, a golden age, it has been presented through Rehana's character. So uh, you may add this to your research as well. Uh, uh, this is all from my side. Anybody Thank would you. like to say anything related to uh, the novel, a golden age, or you can say, would like to add anything to Janissa's uh, presentation?